My name is Lizette Marie Flannery, and I was born in Juneau, Alaska, of all places. We moved from Alaska to Utah to Northern California to Southern California to Virginia. Because my mom and her family are from Hawaii, we ended up spending a lot of time here. I would say, like, for me, that really became the kind of sense of home and sense of family was really here in Hawaii. I went to New York to study film and television production at NYU. After graduation, I decided to stay in New York and work in independent film. We began work on this uh, very ambitious project about hula in California. I was very interested in this story because it was about hula as it was kind of creating community and um, bringing people from Hawaii together you know, on the continent in California, uh, primarily in Los Angeles and San Francisco together. When did I start dancing hula? It really wasn't until, honestly, I started working on the first film that I said, you know, I know a little bit, but I need to really kind of do some research. So it kind of started more as to help me make the film and then kind of just became like a whole huge part of my life. I believe the first time that I met Lizette was when she was doing a, a documentary on hula, the American Aloha. And that was the first time and she came to the hello, introduced herself and um, I was so impressed with Lizette because for those people who know Lizette, Lizette is super prepared and she's very studious. It's one, one of the reasons why I allowed her to study with me for our Uniki class because she was in New York and the class was in San Francisco. But I had no doubt that she would be fantabulous. At the time I was dancing hula in New York and I would constantly get like very dumb questions about hula. It just kind of gave me this fuel to kind of say, okay, I'm so tired of trying to explain this over and over and over again. Why don't I just make a film? I would say at the time, there wasn't, like I didn't really feel like there were lots of stories about Hawaii and Hawaiian culture that were, you know, on public television. There were a lot of like, the first questions in Q&A were kind of like, oh my God, like I had no idea that men danced. I've never seen a man dance hula. How did this happen? And there were, there were so many questions um, from that film that made me kind of realize like, hmm, maybe I should make a film about men who dance. A very dear friend, Kao Wolford. We started talking, and because he danced for Kumu Robert Casimero, we were like, wouldn't it be cool if we could get Robert to agree to let us do a film about him and the only all male halal in Hawaii? So when he finally agreed to, you know, allow us really to make the film. I felt, of course, ecstatic and super excited, but I also felt this tremendous pressure. Like, I really wanted to do um, a good job. I wanted the film to be something that really represented Robert, really represented the men. I just got very lucky. I got very, very lucky. And I also, I kind of think like it, I had very little to do with it. I was just like kind of a conduit to kind of help capture this like amazing, tiny little piece of their journey. In his 30th anniversary, Robert Casimero. Everything about that movie was pretty magical. Pacific Islanders in Communications was working with Heather Juni, and they 
um, we're going to executive produce a film about the Kamehameha School Song Contest. And that was, I think, in 2007, we started um, talking about it. I really was a little nervous because, A, it's Kamehameha Schools. You want to make an amazing movie, obviously. And B, I mean, this is a very beloved tradition here in Hawaii, so I really didn't want to F that up. I felt a little bit like I was in high school again. The first page, the beginning. It was hanging out with 10 high schoolers for a year and following them around uh, school and getting to go home with them and meet their families and kind of go on this journey to song contest with them. Music was just, I mean, I am not musical, right? I dance, but I'm not musical. I'm not a great singer. So I was just, I mean, I would be, you know, shooting and I would just be knocked off my feet. These are really, really special, unique um, kids who have become amazing young people. And now you work with college students. <laughs> Yes, I do. That's why I look like this. <laughs> All right, guys, let's share. Let's talk back. Well, Lizette's like a really cool professor because she is like, she's of course very professional, but she's also really personal where she can like, she'll tell you anything about your work and she isn't going to tailor it to, oh, this is what I, what you want to hear, or this isn't like the cookie cutter answer. She's going to tailor everything directly to the student to help them improve because she's individually invested in each of our projects. You can tell she knows what she's talking about, and the way she like walks up and down the the uh, way right here next to us. I just think she's a really great professor here, and we're really lucky to have her. Lizette is Lady Gaga without the singing. You know, she's smart as a whip. She's super talented. She's focused. She knows what she wants. I I mean, to me, the one kind of thread that kind of ties everything together is hula and being a hula dancer and everything that I've learned as a student affects how I am as a teacher, as a person. I mean, there's just really exciting things going on in Hawaii. Um, and for me, it's just, it's such a privilege to be a part of watching these young filmmakers kind of grow into these like amazing emerging voices this idea that this is a kako thing, this is all of us together, this isn't about one person, this isn't about me, Lizette, this is about the story and about the people who are trusting me to share their story with the world and I just play this tiny little part in, in that. <laughs>